Hello, this is Michael Lucier with Qbox.io to show some of the features of Elasticsearch and in later videos begin digging deep into more sophisticated features using host Elasticsearch with Qbox.io. This will be a several part series giving some instruction on Elasticsearch and Qbox.io's commitment to Elasticsearch. I'll be showing some interesting queries, how to structure your documents, as well as index, node, and cluster settings. On my previous video, I discussed a few of the several dozen major advantages Elasticsearch offers. Today, we're going to begin with an introduction into setting up a local instance of Elasticsearch. Let's start by downloading Elasticsearch, going to elasticsearch.org slash download, and we have our options zip, tar, deb, and rpm. We're going to choose zip, and wait for that to finish. Once the download is finished, we have a couple of steps to take before we launch our server. We will quickly go over some of the settings in the YAML file. Go ahead and hop into the expanded directory, open the config directory, and finally elasticsearch.yaml. This YAML file provides a little over five dozen well-documented settings for Elasticsearch, like shard and replica size. First, let's change the default cluster name. If we don't change this, we can end up with some indexes we don't want from neighbors who didn't change their Elasticsearch cluster name. So we're going to change our cluster name to Qbox Tutorial. The default node name is also very important to change. So we're going to change ours, or I'm going to change mine, and you can change yours to whatever you would like, it is Tutorial Data. The data config and log paths are all also very important to change. You can find those directly over here. Now you can change the data path to whatever, whatever path you want. I'm going to change mine to a directory above, local data, and the config path you cannot change in the config file, which makes sense. So I'm going to show you in a moment how to set the path for the default config file, and you can place this YAML file in whatever that path would be. The reason to set paths is so you can easily reuse these files in newer versions of Elasticsearch. Version releases are fairly frequent, usually every other month or more. I've gone ahead and created a directory for my YAML file. Feel free to provide any path you would prefer. Instead of starting Elasticsearch, bin slash elasticsearch dash f we're going to start elasticsearch with this command what this does is starts elasticsearch and sets the default configuration file to this path I've set mine to one directory up local dash config slash elasticsearch dot yaml this is where my custom yaml file lives so when I start the server up we get a node name of tutorial data and a cluster name of qbox-tutorial. Now the default shard size is 5, the default replica size is 1, and they are located right here. From Kimchi's advice in the past, this will get you quite far. Elasticsearch does come with very sensible defaults that are great for getting up and going. All of these settings have very important roles, but for now we're going to leave the defaults. I will go over these settings in more detail about shard and replica size in later episodes. So now we are ready to start our Elasticsearch server. Once we're in our Elasticsearch directory, which I will do right now, you can easily issue bin slash Elasticsearch dash f to start your server. What I'm going to do instead is use that command I showed before to set your default config path to your customized Elasticsearch.yaml file. Once that is started, what we can do is curl that server to make sure that it's running. And it's true, it's running. And you'll see we have the name of tutorial data. That's how easy it is to launch an Elasticsearch server. Now we'll curl our settings. What our settings are going to tell us is what we have is an empty cluster. No index, no nothing. So we're going to change that by 
grabbing a GitHub repository I've provided. If you go to github.com slash stacksearchinc slash tutorial, you'll find this repo, which includes 10 JSON documents, uh, Disney characters, with some basic string properties. One of the many options for indexing documents is the bulk indexing API. All we have is 10 JSON documents with very basic strings as properties, so what we need to do is require a action and meta tag for every document when bulk indexing to ensure Elasticsearch knows what we want to do. We have several options when bulk indexing. Delete, update, and create, but we're just going to index our JSON documents. The name of our index is Disney, and the type of documents are characters, as you'll see right here. We could use create, but that will fail if the documents with the same index and type already exists. To make sure we don't run into problems with you already having a Disney index with these documents, we will index every document. If you're looking to index from an existing data set, we will go over some of those methods in the next episode. For now, we have a character with animated debut, original voice actor, and name. We used our own ID in indexing these documents, so we can easily delete or update documents. Elasticsearch will automatically provide a dynamic type mapping for the specific property type of the document. So say for example, name. It will also provide an ID if one is not specified automatically, changing the operation type when indexing to create instead of index. As explained earlier, create will fail if any one of the same index, type, or ID already exists. For more information, please visit the Elasticsearch site and the index API documentation. Now we will get into some interesting property relations and search queries in the next episode. For now, we will work with basic documents with fairly simple properties this episode. So let's index these documents. As you might have already noticed, I have provided a command to index all these documents in the document file itself. What this is saying is curl post to our Elasticsearch server using the bulk index API. Data binary is preserving all of our new lines, as dash D does not, at our Disney data file, which is the name of the file, and echo, to echo what we've done. Now what we'll do is take the command that we've just learned into our terminal window, which is inside of our GitHub Qbox tutorial repository, paste that in, and post to our server bulk index data binary at Disney data. Now what this is saying is it took 453 milliseconds indexing the items which have an index of Disney type character ID 1 version 1 because it's the first time we've indexed these documents. Okay true which means they were indexed and that does that 10 times till we get to the bottom here. So what we can do next is curl our local host Disney character and we're going to do a search now that took 28 milliseconds and we got a total of five successful five and these are the hits which have a total of 10 of them so the max score on them is 1.0 we haven't done any boosting but we will get into that into later videos how to change all of these results into very interesting displays and all the different queries we can do and aggregations, which is a post I will be doing very shortly and we'll have a video on probably in the next to third video. What I've also provided with this repository is a Elasticsearch JS implementation using Angular JS. You can search around in this, experiment with what you like. There is documentation on it at the Elasticsearch site as well as a short blog post sort of talking about getting up and running. This is just displaying all the results that we put into our Elasticsearch cluster. And you, I did a little Bootstrap 3 display here, and you can just enter in any query you want. There is no complicated search query going on here. It's just a literal query. But I will get into more complicated data sets as well as more complicated query results and different facets and several different things that Elasticsearch provides you to make these searches very interesting and extremely valuable to what you're going to be doing with them.
This was Michael Lucier with Qbox.io. Please come back for future episodes and blog posts about interesting things everyone's doing with Elasticsearch around the web. If you would like to start up with Qbox.io, we do offer hosted, dedicated instances of Elasticsearch. You will get a free $35 credit hour to any cluster size or node size you would prefer. This is enough for a T1 micro for a month or a larger cluster for a shorter period of time. This is Michael with Qbox.io. Thank you for watching.